Welcome back to Oakhaven. Normally on this channel we talk about uh, native plants and how to protect and how to, uh, to get rid of non-natives for the sake of uh, native plants. Uh, today we're going to talk about something a little different uh, because we're going to talk about uh, how to get rid of a non-native plant, Japanese stiltgrass, from a lawn area. Now most of a lawn area is non-native plants also, but there's something nice about a lawn area. We don't have a lot of it. Uh, this is probably a quarter of our lawn area just in this little circle here that we're going to be talking about today. Um, it is mostly non-native plants, but, uh, but we want to keep them. Um, but we don't want the Japanese stiltgrass growing here because the Japanese stiltgrass will seed off and that will grow in the woods. Most lawn plants, they like the sun. They need the full sun. So they don't really compete with things that I'm worried about in the, in the, um, in the shade of the woodlands. Japanese stiltgrass grows fine out in the shade of the woodlands, so we want to cut down on seed production any way we can. We've got it uh, cleared out of most of the area around the house here, but for some reason it's growing up in the lawn here, so we wanted to talk about how to take care of it. So Japanese stiltgrass, we've done two fairly lengthy videos on Japanese stiltgrass, on how to identify it, how to compare it to other things that are in the, the woodlands, um, and how we treat it. Uh, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that, but I do want to show just generally what Japanese stiltgrass is. Um, so Japanese stiltgrass is an annual grass, means it grows up from seed every year. It has these oval leaves that come to a point, and if you get it in the light just right, uh, there's a shiny stripe down the middle of it. So that is Japanese stiltgrass, very invasive, uh, non-native plant and will take over, it will carpet areas out in the woodlands that we're trying to get rid of. Now, if you come over here, you'll see some of the things that are in the lawn here. Th there's not just one type of grass, there's an assortment of grasses here. Uh, I've got half a dozen of them that I just picked out without any effort. I'm not really a grass person, I can't tell you what all of them are necessarily, I wish I could. I can tell you what the, um, the uh, Kentucky bluegrass is and uh, the stilt grass, but other than that, um, I have more difficulty. So having a, a diversity of grass types in your lawn is a good thing because um, diversity on anything is good. Uh, if you have just one type of grass uh, and then there's a blight that hits that particular uh, grass or it's drier or wetter than normal for that grass, uh, you might lose it. If you've got a diversity of grasses, they can kind of switch uh, dominance and um, adjust for any, any changes. So I like there to be some diversity of grass. I just don't want this particular <laughs> non-native grass that's going to seed into our woodlands. So as you can see, the um, Japanese stilt grass forms the, the, the dominant plant here because it's got such a broad leaf. You know, the, the uh, rye grasses, the um, Kentucky bluegrass are really narrow leaf, leaf blades but the uh, Japanese stiltgrass has such a broad leaf that it actually shades the rest of the, the, uh, the understory here. So you get an idea of what it looks like. It looks very different. It do, it doesn't, you're not going to confuse this with a regular lawn grass. We're going to be treating with Acclaim Extra. Acclaim Extra is a grass-specific herbicide, so that's why we use it in the woodlands. It kills the grass. It does not kill forbs, so we can spray broad areas of Japanese stiltgrass in the woods, and it will kill the Japanese stiltgrass, and the uh, white snake root or whatever is growing around it will um, be just fine. It doesn't impact it. It will also kill certain things in the grass in a lawn and not other things. So you can spray it into a lawn, and it will. Let me let me give you the list because I don't want to I don't want to mess up on this. So it will, it is good for turf that is made up of Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, fine fescues, tall fescues, annual bluegrass, um, zoysia grass, or creeping bent grass. So we're talking about lawns that are made up of those things. The weeds that it controls in those are smooth crabgrass, large crabgrass, goose grass, barnyard grass, foxtail species, panicum species, Johnson grass seedlings, sand burr, sprangle top, and Japanese stiltgrass. So it will kill some grasses, but grasses. Our goal here is we want to kill off the Japanese stiltgrass, but we want to leave our lawn without big dead spots in it. So I could go through and identify every 
grass that we have here, it would take a while, and again, that's not my strength, so it would take me a little while to get through that. Um, what I did instead was I took and I made up a solution, and up here I did a test plot. I just sprayed it over an area, it killed the Japanese stilt grass, there was still plenty of lawn, I felt good about that, now we're going to treat the whole area. Okay, because I'm interested in seeing how it impacts the uh, acclaim extra, impacts the Japanese stilt grass, and how it impacts other things, I've set up a couple of test plots. So these are one foot square test plots, you can see here, and it has plenty of at least this one has at least three different species of grass in it. One more over there that has uh, different species of grass in it. And I have set it up with the, the frame here, but if you look underneath it, I've also done it in pink string down close to the ground so that we can mow over it during the course of this, this test. So we're going to do this again. We're using Acclaim Extra. The uh, people talk about a claim extra as being really expensive. It's expensive for a bottle. This bottle, I think, I just looked last night and it was in the $80 range. That's a lot of money for a concentrate. But we use 8 milliliters, 9 milliliters, 9 milliliters in a gallon. It ends up being less than $2 a gallon. Uh, I also don't like mosquitoes. Um, less than two dollars a gallon to use. So it's it's expensive to buy the concentrate, but the concentrate will last for several years, and when you dilute it down, it's pretty reasonable. So we use a claim extra, nine milliliters per gallon. We mix it up into two gallon sprayers, that's 18 milliliters. Then we put a surfactant in there. This is a FarmWorks 80-20 surfactant, and a non-ionic surfactant. That's something that will allow the the herbicide to spread over the leaves rather than beat up on the leaves and, and drop off. Uh, so it, it improves its, um, the herbicide's ability to, to get into the plant itself. We put it in at a rate of about one ounce per gallon. I've heard people say to use a surfactant at a half an ounce per gallon. Uh, for some reason with Japanese stiltgrass, I feel like it beads up anyway. So one ounce per gallon seems like a good amount for us. Now, when we're working out in the woods, we add a dye to it. Uh, so you can see the re uh, res residue from the dye that we normally would have in the sprayer. Because we're doing a big section of our front yard, um, I chose not to put any more dye in it, and we'll just look for the, uh, the wet leaves as I'm spraying it so I know where we've sprayed. Uh, so there's no dye in this. Now, when we're spraying, I use a respirator because when I aerosol herbicides, I don't want it getting up into my lungs. When we're dabbing herbicides onto a cut stem, I'm not so concerned about it. But in this situation, we're actually going to be misting it out. Some of it's going to get into the air. I don't want that to get into my lungs. So I have a respirator. Um, this is a respirator that um, filters out uh, organic um, herbicides. So it's fairly inexpensive. I think I bought this at Harbor Freight for less than $20. And then uh, rubber gloves. I also have just regular gloves that are rubberized. Um, but I couldn't find those for this, so we're going to do it this way. So a claim extra is supposedly rain safe after an hour, so we have at least a day, uh, so it's a good time to be spraying. Uh, but it's not a good idea for Kimber to be out here when we're spraying, because I don't want her to be walking through it and picking it up on her paws. So once it dries, I'm not so worried about it, but we're going to put her in for right now. Before I get all covered up here, I should mention that I just bought a new pint of the Acclaim Extra Concentrate um, last night online from SeedBarn.com, and uh, as I said, it was like $83 for the pint. There were most of the other vendors that I saw that sold it, sold it for $125, $130, $135 um, a pint. So um, think about that when you're, when you're looking for, for options and where you're going to buy it. We don't have any connection with the seed barn. I'll mention that I have a blue tag on this sprayer. Uh, that's because the last few days I've been I've been carrying two sprayers around. I've been working in a creek bed spraying a claim extra on Japanese stiltgrass, but a claim extra is very toxic to aquatic life, fish, and things like that. So I don't spray it in a creek bed. What I'm using down there is a formulation of glyphosate. Um, I use a 2%. I appreciate that other people will use uh, a lower 
percentage, but I use glyphosate with a, a surfactant that is more aquatic friendly. So it's, it's a product that's called Shore Clear, uh, and that's what we use um, in the, the creek bed. So just so that I had my, my sprayers right, I had this one marked with, with blue, um, because again, you don't, want this, you don't want to spray this in a place where it'll get into the water. Now, when I put this on, obviously I can't talk. Um, this is more than just, you know, a face mask that you would wear for COVID, um, because this is actually filtering out um, organic um, particles. So uh, a good rule of thumb is if you can't smell it when you have this on, it's uh, sealed up and it's working pretty well. If you can smell it, you've got some sort of a leak and you may want to uh, do something to remedy that. Okay. So as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that it's harder to see where I've gone um, without the, the dye in it. So I've started to lay out blue flags to define where I've, um, the end of my, my row was, and then I'm coming over here and starting a new row, and I'll put flags along there so that I'll, I'll be able to keep track of what I've done and what I haven't. Uh, I really find that with these, with any herbicide, the problem with it not being successful is more in what you miss, not in that the herbicide is not um, effective on the plant. It's just it's real easy to miss something or there's a leaf uh, covering over it and it doesn't get full coverage. Uh, so my goal is to get full coverage as much as possible. So I'm going to finish up spraying this area and then we're going to come back in a week, two weeks, whatever it takes for this to, to uh, show up what it's done. Uh, and then we'll show you what the test plots look like and what it looks like overall. And uh, hopefully we will have uh, killed off all of our stilt grass and we'll have a, a beautiful lush lawn uh, in place of it. It's been three weeks since we treated this lawn area. And I'll be honest, the results are kind of mixed. Uh, it's, it's not as good as I was hoping. There was a lot of stilt grass in here before. And if you look at some of our test plots, you can see that, like, this test plot was pretty much full of Japanese stiltgrass and other things. And the Japanese stiltgrass looks pretty sickly. You know, the leaves are brown and it is dying. Uh, three weeks, I would hope that it would be worse than that. Um, so I don't know exactly what it's going to do, if that means it's just going to die completely. Again, my goal is to keep it from seeding. Uh, it's an annual, so if, if it dies and never sets seed, we're good. If it doesn't make it through the winter, we're good, and this is all it needs to do. I don't know whether that's, this is enough or not. We'll have to, to come back and, and uh, do another video. As I look over things, I see here's a big patch where it looks sickly, but not quite as sickly as it did in our sample patch. And then we have over here a huge swath that I'm guessing I never sprayed. You know, there's no sign at all that this was sprayed. So remember, when I sprayed this area, I pretty much spot treated it. I, I sprayed areas that I could see plant growth, uh, and it was a little unclear because I didn't use a, a, an indicator dye. It was a little unclear as to whether or not I'd covered the whole area. This obviously had not been done, whether that was because there was no stilt grass visible, or I just missed it, or um, I don't know. But this is a pretty healthy area. So I would say that the solution here, oh, well, let me show you this other area first of all. This area was a lot of stilt grass, and you can see the, the grass is kind of, there's a lot of dead grass over here. One of our goals was we wanted to kill the stilt grass and not kill the, the rye grass and the Kentucky blue grass and other things that were here. There's a lot of dead grass over here, but, but that's mostly because we've obviously had something digging up the grass here. I'm guessing turkeys have been in here um, feasting and digging up the grass, so it, uh, a big portion of our test plot was, was dug up by something other than, um, or damaged by something other than the, the chemicals we were testing. So my goal here is I think I will spray it again. It, it doesn't seem, if you look at the areas other than where the turkeys are, 
the grass still looks pretty healthy. The, the lawn part of it looks still pretty healthy. And most of the, the stilt grass is um, either dead or dying, unless it's stuff that I missed completely. So I'm going to mix up some more. I'm going to spray it again, spray the areas that I missed. I'm probably not going to respray the areas that are, look like they're dying. Uh, I'm hoping that those are on the way out and I'll just let them uh, decay into nothing. So I'll put in some pictures here of the, what these test plots look like initially, what they look like after a week or two. I'll put down the, the date as to how long that was, and then what they look like now after three weeks. And you'll get an idea of the, uh, the sequence here of how much, they're, uh, how much it's improving. Um, what's dying, what's not dying. You can see that the, the lawn part of it still looks pretty good. You know, I don't mind using this on a lawn. There's definitely some dead stuff in the lawn. Um, it may knock back, you know, the, the positive things. It may knock back the, um, the Kentucky bluegrass a little bit. But it's still, it, it's, uh, it, there's going to be lawn by the time we're done with this project. Anyway, that gives you an idea of what's going on right now. We'll continue this and uh, do more video. So it's been another week since we... Uh, did our last update on this area and uh, as you can see behind me the lawn looks great you know the the turf grasses are recovered and looking strong and I was concerned last time because there was a lot of stilt grass that looked sickly but wasn't dead and now if you come over here and look at our test plot it looks pretty well clear I don't see any stilt grass in this plot again and as I look around through the rest of the lawn uh, there really isn't any stilt grass. So um, I think it's been successful. The lawn looks good. Uh, stilt grass is gone. Now, the last we spoke, there was a patch over here that uh, looked like I had overlooked because it just looked fresh and clean. And I did spray that. So this is a week ago. And as you can see, the stilt grass part of it, it looks pretty sickly. It, uh, it's not dead yet but it looks pretty sickly, kind of like it did last week for the area over there, which is now completely cleared up. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, bottom line was uh, claim extra worked very well in the lawn area. It killed the stilt grass. It left the turf grass uh, to live. That's a, a plus. So our primary use of a claim extra is to get rid of stilt grass out in the, in the woods. And we are working on a project right now where we have, uh, boy, a lot of test plots where we're trying different things, um, trying some different uh, dilutions of glyphosate and comparing it to the Acclaim Extra. And we're actually trying uh, a couple of or three dilutions of vinegar or acetic acid uh, to get rid of stilt grass out in the woods. So if you're interested in how to get rid of stilt grass in the woods, we've got that video coming on. I don't really want to post it until we find out how everything works. So you have one complete video that shows uh, start to finish how those worked. So pay attention to that. A claim extra also takes out some other grassy weeds like crabgrass and other things. I don't know, it's not my concern, so uh, maybe I'll put a list of uh, uh, what, what a claim extra uh, kills and what it's, uh, it doesn't kill uh, in the video here. So you can kind of see a comparison of uh, what it's meant to, uh, what, it, what the target uh, plants are. Um, my target was specifically just uh, the stilt grass. I'm not so concerned about um, the uh, crabgrass um, but we'll see but it, it did what I wanted it to do which was to get rid of the stilt grass here so hopefully that was useful to you if you've got a lawn area that has stilt grass um, a clay extra works great we use it in the woods all the time uh, so it's a good idea for the lawn also thanks a lot